if you want to follow along today, I have this link here where we can take shared notes in a Google Doc. Um, this is something that we did over the summer and worked really well, but uh, feel free, anyone, to just grab that link. I've also pasted it in the chat uh, up at the top there uh, in case uh, you, you happen to lose it. And uh, a link to these slides is there as well. And I'm not sure if you can download them or, not, them or not from the WebEx, but anyway. So um, I want to announce that this group, working group will have a presence at the next ESIP winter meeting. And uh, ESIP stands for Earth Science Information Partners, just in case uh, everyone was wondering, what the heck is ESIP? But uh, there's a link there to information about the winter meeting. And our Drupal working group is going to have um, two sessions at that winter meeting. One is just an open house where we'll be able to talk about why all of us use Drupal to folks that might be interested. Uh, and Cheryl, I see, or Crystal, I see your, your comment there, so I'll post that link. Um, and, and that open house will feature um, this really cool project uh, out of, uh, I think, Alabama Huntsville in conjunction with uh, Bruce's Science on Drupal uh, New Media Studio Group. But uh, we're also having our very first Science on Drupal code sprint there, and uh, we're having a discussion on our groups page about what topics we want to tackle. Uh, David, the co-chair of this group here, just put that up uh, about a week ago. So feel free to, to find more information at that link and, and vote and, and comment on potential code sprint ideas. Uh, and so we'll send out emails offline here about more information uh, for the winter meeting. So without taking up too much more time, I want to turn it over to uh, uh, Kerry and, um, and uh, her presentation on Drupal backups and best practices using the backup and migrate module and, and node squirrel. So I'll post this link and uh, Kerry, it is all you. I'll pass the ball over to you. Okay. And, uh, all right. Um, do we need to do anything to share a, share a screen? Or yeah, is, uh, I'm trying to, to <laughs> uh, uh, I know. Why does this interface look different? I know they've changed. Okay, good. I'm not not crazy. So um, I don't hope so. If you go to the Quick Start tab, thank you. There we go. All right. Uh, I think the middle. Thank you. Bar. Thank you. Gotcha. All right. I'm gonna mute and then uh, I'll just monitor the chat. If you need me, uh, I'll pipe back in. Okay. Awesome. Great. All right. All right, so I'm going to just switch. There we go. All right. Well, uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. As Adam said, I'm Carrie Tuppy. Uh, with me is Drew Gordon. Hello. <laughs> and we're going to talk about Backup and Migrate and Node Squirrel and a few of the things that we've learned about hmm. best practices when it, uh, when it comes to backups and, and hopefully how these tools uh, can help you. Um, Drew happens to be the CEO of Gorton Studios, which, um, Drew, why don't I let you <laughs> I can talk about you or you yeah. can just talk. No, that's fine. Uh, yeah, no, well, I, there we go. I'm the CEO of Gorton Studios. We are a, um, we're a firm that's been doing uh, great Drupal stuff for a long time. We got involved with Drupal back in the, the 4.4, 4.5 era, which is, you know, forever ago. Uh, really started thinking it was a pretty neat tool. Um, somewhere around four, six, four, seven. And uh, so we've been active in the community for a very long time. And uh, as, as I relates to today, one of the things that we did a long time ago uh, was contribute a module called Backup and Migrate. And uh, it's been part of the ecosystem since then. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm obviously the Gorton of Gorton Studios. Um, and Carrie, you didn't say anything about yourself. No, I didn't. But uh, I'm I'm the Carrie of Gorton Studios. <laughs> and I have a I have a couple of roles here at Gorton Studios. Uh, one of them is a product manager for Node Squirrel, and then I also do work with uh, content strategy for our clients as well. So I'm wearing the Node Squirrel uh, hat today. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so Drew mentioned. Uh, uh, founded in 2001 and been involved with Drupal since version 4.7. Drew, um, you, Ronan, actually, mm -hmm. created the Backup and Migrate module in 2005 mm -hmm. uh, for, the, for Drupal 5 and has been developing it 
since then, right? Yeah, yep. A um, few co-maintainers for the module, I think, here and there, but no, mostly really. he's been working yeah, solo. Basically Ronan, yep. Great. Yep. Um, Backup and Migrate is one of the most uh, popular modules in the, the Drupal ecosystem. It's number 17, last time I checked, um, on the, the list of um, yeah, most, most used modules. Most yep. used modules. Uh, it's got about 1.6 million downloads and re you know reported installs, about 290K. So all of that to, to say that it's it's been a really popular and uh, I think much appreciated module um, among developers and then and then also uh, I think among site site admins and site maintainers. Um, mm -hmm. So then you started Node Scroll and launched it in late, late 2012. 2012 yeah. Yep. And and so, yeah, we'll talk about um, what Backup and Migrate is and does and why we made it in the first place. Um, and, and then Node Scroll is kind of solving a problem that it created. And that, so very briefly, Backup and Migrate makes it super easy to create a, a really uh, very uh, targeted Drupal backup um, that is so Drupal optimized, as it were. So it's a great way to, um, to to replicate a live environment, for example, as you just drop into the admin interface, uh, either make a new backup right now, or uh, or just grab one from this morning, and then uh, upload it on your, or, or uh, t uh, install it on your local dev machine. Um, so restore, and there you go, you've got the, the situation, the, the site is duplicated, and uh, you can start solving the problem. And, and originally, Ronan wrote it out of frustration with uh, different hosts, basically. Like sometimes you had command line access, sometimes you had like a, a you know hobbled PHP my admin you could get to. Uh, sometimes there were other things, or you had to put in a ticket to support. Like uh, there are all different kinds of situations. And and uh, he realized that he was spending so much time just trying to solve this problem. Like oh this the, you know this host or this server or this you know whatever the environment was. Uh, that's how you get to the database. Um, and uh, he sort of reasoned out, well, you know what can read Drupal's database, Drupal, uh, and he took that as a starting point and said, this is going to work anywhere Drupal works. That's that's my baseline. I just want it to work when Drupal works. And then it, it's going to be there, it's going to be reliable, and it's going to make backups, and it's going to make it easy for me to be able to restore this onto my local computer. And that was, I mean, the, you know, all open source software is scratching your own itch. That was very much the itch he was scratching. And, um, and again, you know, other people have obviously had it as well. Uh, it, it has some, uh, you know, it's useful to have backups. <laughs> These are good things. Nope. Did you? Uh, um, I, I forwarded yeah. the point. Right? <laughs> so I, I just want to. I don't think we. Oh, we didn't mention about what Node Squirrel yeah, is, yeah. right? Oh, sure, so. sure, sure, right, right, right. So Node Squirrel is an uh, basically offsite storage for backup and migrate, essentially. So backup and migrate by default will make a backup and store it where you tell it to. But out of the box, uh, what's configured is the local files directory because that's the one thing that Drupal always has. Um, so uh, that's great, um, except for a backup on your local server is not really a backup. It's it's a backup in some situations, but for any sort of serious problem, you know, a backup sitting right next to the, the thing that went wrong uh, is not terribly robust in terms of being a backup. Um, and so Node Squirrel is an off-site extension of Backup and Migrate. It's, it's, a, it's a destination, basically, for Backup and Migrate to uh, send things. Um, and so we're going to be talking about backup and migrate, why it's useful and such. But Node Scroll is basically just a it's, it's a paid service that that extends backup and migrate effectively to make it easy to get your backups offsite. Um, so Drew and I have both individually had our horrific at yeah. times experiences <laughs> with um, with backups not being there, clients ex clients. Ex um, experiencing very bad things with their websites or doing very bad things to their mm -hmm. websites, and uh, it's it's really kind of kind of why we we both sit here and go, oh, this is so important. Yeah. This is so 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 important. Um, I I was in the situation where uh, not not while I was with Gurton Studios, but we had a former job where a, a client uh, client's website went down. The hosting company was supposed to have had backups. It uh, turns out that those backups of the database were corrupted for weeks back, and um, so I got to tell the client that we were going to use a version of their database dated back a couple of weeks, and that 
all the content that volunteers had been entering in the in the meantime, well, that was just gone. Yeah. And um, so that it was, was like lesson plans no, from like was, hundreds yeah, of teachers. Was, and yes, yeah, was yeah, exactly. Like, it was it was the non the client yeah. was um, was uh, uh, an organization that that offered ESL classes and volunteer teachers were in leaving notes about here's what I taught today, here's what went well, and all of that was gone. And that Ugh. that that day just that took. A couple of years off my life, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that uh, it's just no fun to to have to yeah, to find out that that, you, that kind of it's no fun to find out the data's gone. Yeah. And I, uh, if we'd had back of a migrate and node scroll running, we could we just wouldn't have been in that position. Yeah. And we've seen um, we've seen similar things while working here at Garden Studios, where um, otherwise reputable hosting companies or people like non, you know, not GoDaddy, you know, like just like companies that are real that, that charge, you know, three figure sums for monthly host uh, fees and have an extra, you know, line for backup and such. Um, something goes wrong. It turns out for whatever reason, the backups don't work. Uh, and we've seen that multiple times. And um, one of the ones that I'm thinking of is about a year ago, actually, we had a school district that we worked with um, have this problem. And uh, you know, it was, was going to go back months, I think, for the host backups. And while we, while the host was going and like, and the ticket was in, and they were trying to figure out what was going wrong, um, we were able to just check the notes scroll repository and say, oh, we've got one from this morning. I, I think it works. Boom, works, done. And we look like heroes. And I don't know. I mean, like the 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 bad on that story would have been really horrendous. But basically, we were able to uh, recover almost immediately. Um, and that was that that felt pretty awesome. And it also let us get back to the things that we were supposed to be working on that day, uh, with really not that much fuss. Um, but even things like you know people installing modules on a website. Um, you know, I'm sorry, one of the things, like, we're using the language of clients and such, uh, but that's kind of like our worldview. Uh, how how many of your members are making sites for others versus for themselves? Um, so, me personally, I just manage one site for uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution for a data management office. Um, so, I'm not working on too many sites external to, to my job. Um, but that's just me. I don't know if Crystal or, or Bruce have other situations. We maintain three different sites for three different entities. This is Crystal. Um, but it's all for basically in-house and maybe external just here at Langley. Sure. And I'm sorry, when I, uh, I, I use the word client maybe as a... Uh, it would be better to maybe think of the word partner. Like, you're probably not making the website only for yourself. Like, you've got admins or content people or others, I guess. Um, like, it, uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing. Is that, is that accurate? About half the time, maybe, but it's for other people on center. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, same here, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. Certainly. I mean, like we have our own website as well. Uh, sorry. So, like, uh, this is this is again the, the natural language we have is that of uh, working with others to help build their websites. But uh, even with our own website, certainly these these things all apply. Um, I guess that exposure is just maybe yeah. <laughs> we had that many wrong. more that many more chances to see things yeah, go wrong. Right, right. So. Yeah, but I think regardless, things things can go wrong. Yeah. They they yeah. do go wrong every once in a while, yeah. right? Yeah. And and uh, people can install modules and 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 explode the site. They yeah. can accidentally delete things and explode the site. Stuff yeah. happens. Yeah, no, so you've got to be ready for it. Right, and, and especially hurts when you're the person doing the thing. <laughs> yeah, who's <laughs> got to well, pick up the pieces that have exploded? Yeah. yeah. Well, no. When you're the person who did the exploding, oh yeah, that that's uh, not totally been that person too. Yeah. 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 Like, whoops. Yeah. Always make it back before you do an upgrade, etc. Right. Um, so avoiding explosions. Yeah. Uh, back of the migrate, as as we said earlier, backup of the migrate is the module that that you would use to create backups, and that includes um, creating the schedules for when those backups happen, um, identifying destinations where those backups should be stored, um, adding notes, um, and just also you know 
with the latest version of Backup and Migrate, you can decide if you want to grab um, the database, the public files directly, directory, or the whole thing. And you can set different, uh, different schedules for backing up those different, different pieces. And, and we'll take a look at, the, um, at, the, at where that happens um, in a bit. Um, there are, within Backup and Migrate, there are options for, for how you actually manage those, those backups, you know, the, whether you keep X number or use a, a smart delete system, which, um, which again, we'll take a look at that and, and lets you keep targeted, targeted backups at, um, daily, so many daily, so many weekly, so many monthly. And then you would also use Backup and Migrate if you ever need to actually restore um, using one of those backups. So, um, so that's what Backup and Migrate does. And it also comes with a, an additional set of tools to kind of expand its functionality. Um, yeah. So these, well, it doesn't, I mean, these are just other modules that, that uh, like Backup and Migrate is established well enough that uh, other, other tools in the ecosystem are, are integrated with it. So Elysia Cron, so setting your backups to, you know, I only want to run at 3 o'clock in the morning or, you know, 207 or whatever, um, having that kind of flexibility. AES encryption, so having a double encrypting of backups. Um, and uh, doing you know doing exportables for your, your schedules and such, uh, working with Drush, um, the uh, the Node Scroll secret key is very specific to Node Scroll by keeping uh, you know having a uh, we can I guess we can talk about that later as, as it comes up. Um, before uh, you know, I'm sorry we kind of chat a little bit. I I we said that some stuff about back and migrate. I I don't know if that was enough or too much actually, and I. <laughs> I, I can't look at the room to <laughs> see if everyone's like, or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I think that was a great introduction. It, it, I think a lot more questions might pop up as we um, see it in action. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so let's, let's go, okay. let's go, yeah, no, yeah, no, so no chatter, let's, let go, let's go use some share. of it. Yeah. Yep. All right. Um, Okay. Yeah. So this is the back of the migrate interface for uh, on uh, our website. So when you when you uh, start with back of a migrate, um, I'm just clicking on. Did I click? Yeah. I did. Yes. Okay. So when you uh, when you get into back of a migrate, uh, there's a few different tabs, but the, the the big one is to just make a backup. And when you like out of the box, this is what the latest version of back of migrate looks like. So back of my database to where you're going to go. Different options. Again, we see no scrolls being one of the options there. Um, and default settings, we can kind of take a look at that. So what this is right now is uh, it's excluding data from tables that Drupal will recreate, like cache tables, for example. Um, you can configure this. We can, we'll see where that is. But um, actually, you know, so let's just here, so demo note, if you want to, you know, like right before I install the one really, you know, right before the new feature release. Um, release. Um, and making a backup is quick, and um, it you know happens. Uh, you know, it's there. Woo, it's it's back. Quick. Yeah, exactly right. So it's you know, it gives you a little confirmation. So it tells us where it is. Uh, it takes two seconds. So um, this isn't the largest website ever, but you know, it, it's nice. It, it runs quickly, and the fact that you can just schedule this then kind of takes care of things. Right. Um, I mentioned so there's you know what what are you going to back up? There's, again, some different things, the public files directory that you probably need, you know, in Drupal, uh, the database is the thing that probably changes the most. Um, but, you know, you might have a daily or hourly schedule for, for the database, and then you might also want to have uh, maybe a, a daily or weekly schedule for public files. Uh, entire site, maybe you grab, you know, even less frequently. Uh, again, you've probably got version control managing your code and such. Uh, and then where you're storing it, again, being an option. Uh, email is a possibility, uh, though not one that we really we would recommend. Not recommend. Right. It, it was <clears throat> there's a long story behind why that exists, but uh, emailing sensitive information is probably not the right right thing to do. Uh, so we would we would strongly caution against that. Uh, and again, then, then the settings being um, well, we can go take a look at maybe some of the settings. Uh, that was. Sorry, maybe I'm off on the... Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I was going to say, why don't we... Here we go. Yeah, huh? okay. Oh, I just wanted to actually take sure, a look sure. at that. So, okay. so the things... So, uh, setting things to be like, what compression are you going to use? Are you going to append a timestamp? Um, what are you going to include? So, 
a database, a database backup, one kind at least, you might not want to have the access log. You might not want to have, for example, some of the watchdog tables, like all of those things. You could, um, but uh, yeah, I'll view these as checkboxes so we can see a few more. So things like the cache, the various uh, cache tables being things that Drupal will recreate. Do you really need to store those? Um, you know, doing so is just overhead. But, you know, maybe maybe you do have a, a use case. Whoops, sorry. You do have a use case for um, for keeping those or not. But out of, the, out of the box, the defaults are to, you know, not recreate all of the search or, or not uh, back up all of the derived uh, search index kinds of information, for example, as well. Um, and... Uh, <clears throat> so, yep. so we have the same options under public files. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like what file? What or, areas we're going to? Uh, what what files we're going to back up? And uh, and when we're doing this, uh, likewise, what are we going to exclude, if anything? Yeah. And um, and a couple of the nice little features there too, like if a backup succeeds or a backup fails, send you an email. Um, use CLI commands. Um, so if you have if you have a server environment that will support you know something like MySQL dump or command line tools, basically, um, uh, you can you can check this box so that. Um, it's using those more optimized tools. It's, it's labeled experimental. Um, that is um, primarily, well, that's experimental in the sense that it's just less well used. Uh, back of the migrate by default is um, intended to be the, have Drupal as its only dependency. And that is the, we think the vast majority of the hundreds of thousands of people using it. Uh, are using it without this. Uh, and so experimental is all about like, well, I don't know, there's probably some configurations where something weird could happen where MySQL dump doesn't quite work. So, um, but it, if you have someone who's familiar enough with servers to know what that, that might mean, you're probably fine with that. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, those, those are a bunch yeah. of the different settings there. You uh, Did you have something you wanted yeah, to Yeah, well, I was gonna say, so, um, so you can set up, we've got a schedules tab where you um, you can edit your existing schedules um, and add additional ones here. Um, examples uh, would be, oops, examples would be, you know, backing up the database once a day or, or maybe it's four times a day, depending on how often uh, data is being written to it. Um, back up your files, maybe that's once a day, maybe that's once a week. It's going to, again, depend on what kind of a, a site you've got, and then full backup as well. So those, you know, those setting up minimally, those three types of backups uh, would probably do a really good job of covering, um, of covering what uh, your site and, and if you, uh, if you ever need to go to uh, revert to a backup. I want to make sure that we pointed out the, the delete options. So, um, um, when when you create a backup schedule, one of the options is to automatically delete old backups. Um, and there are two options there, smart delete and simple delete. I'll just start with simple delete. Uh, that's just keep X number of backups. And, and if I were to say keep 20, once I hit backup 21, um, the oldest one, it gets jettisoned. jettisoned. Um, smart delete um, is going to keep hourly backups, as it says, for 24 hours, daily backups for the past 30 days, and weekly backups forever. So that's, you know, that's a just set it and forget about it yep. option that's, that's really nice. Um, you guys, can I quickly ask a question? Yeah, please. Yeah, this I mean this is really cool. I, I'm running it must be a slightly older version so I see a ton of new features here which are are really great and I just wanted to comment before I forgot that um being able to tie in the files and all that uh in, in these simple versus smart is just so so cool. So really appreciate the work that you guys are doing. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, I should mention, like, if anybody doesn't actually have it um, installed already, obviously, it's Drupal module. Well, I should, maybe not, obviously. Let's just mention. This is where you get it, Drupal.org, back of migrate. Uh, Ronan is uh, not on the call right now, but we can see him. He's in the room over there. Hi, Ronan. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is... Yeah, so the latest version is 7... Uh, 7.3, yep. and and that is the version that has the new features yep. that you've noticed. So, yep. addition of public files and um, smart delete yep. as well. Yep. Yep. Um, Any other questions or comments uh, while we're... 
All right, we'll take that as no. <laughs> so once you've made backups, you, you've tested, and, and really um, I think the, the process that we'd recommend for implementing the module is obviously install it. Mm -hmm. uh, use the quick backup tool that you would see here in the backup uh, screen, and, and just make sure that it's going to work. Run a backup, ideally even do a quick restore with it as well. Mm -hmm. Make sure things are functioning as you expect. And then go set up schedules for doing regular backups. Set it, forget about it, then you're golden. Um, then if you, if you do need to restore, your backups are going to appear. And she clicks on the restore tab and it does take you a sec. There we go. Oh. What are we going to look for there? Um, there we go. Oh, I just wanted to point out that um, you've got a couple of options. If you um, if you aren't using Note Squirrel, mm -hmm. then when you want to do a restore, you're going to come to this tab and either choose a file. Um, and basically, you're going to choose your file that you want to restore from and and then you know identify what it is you're going to going you're to restoring, be restoring, yep. right? Yep. You can also see this too from um, uh, the save, <clears throat> save backups, which is, again, the interface has changed a little bit uh, in, in the last while. So that we see here, we're looking at all of the recent backups. Here's the one that, uh, the one at the very top here is the right before uh, the new feature release. Um, the, the, the note I typed just a moment ago. But we see that I have something from 20 hours ago as well. Uh, and it, this, this one actually happens to be stored off-site uh, at Node Squirrel. Uh, it looks like most of the recent backups, there's some in your schedule backups and such, but most of the recent backups are from uh, at Node, Node Squirrel here. Um, and then so just storing them, so you can download any of these. So just click, boom. Um, yeah, and that's kind of the... The, the big thing, I suppose it probably makes sense to mention the node scroll tab. Um, so back of, so node scroll is built into well, as, or excuse me, into back of a migrate of, as of the three, no, it started in two, or, uh, at some point recently, built into. Um, and uh, um, once you, it's pretty much like Malum or the other, you know, like Google Analytics or something else like that. We get a secret key, plop it in, and then uh, your backups are head, you know, stored out there as well, as long as you configure that. And so notes, the note scroll tab tells you the status of that. If you don't have something configured, it will uh, uh, it'll say here, paste in your key, you know, go ahead, it's free trial sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so hey, when you real when quick, you have carry your, I'm sure. sorry to interrupt you. Um, I just wanted to note that Bruce asked a quick question in the chat here. Um, he asked, "Is there a message if the backup fails? Um, and if so, like I'm, I'm just curious what that sort of like and what options you can configure with that." Yeah, if we go to backup, um, like the, in the backup, there's an, the email option, advanced backup here. One of these guys has a an option, advanced option. So send an email if the backup fails. Um, and so this can, so, and it just gives you sort of a generic thing, backup failed or you know, like it's a super generic thing. Uh, likewise, you know, you could do the same thing for um, if a backup succeeds. And by default, I think it takes the admin account on the um, on the site. Um, you probably don't want if it succeeds, but you might. But yeah, that would be that would be the notification system that's built in. Cool. There Thank you, guys. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. So I'm gonna switch back to our uh, our slides here. Um, so as we, we mentioned earlier, um, Node Squirrel is basically cloud backup for backup and migrate. So any, if you, it's a, it's a paid service and if you use it, basically uh, Node Squirrel becomes the, uh, the storage service that you use for, uh, for your backup and migrate backups. Um, as you mentioned, it's secure and encrypted. Um, 
and, and I think the, the the phrase is encrypted at rest, right? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's encrypted over the wire, and it's in, encrypted at rest. Um, so uh, again, trying to make it easy to do the right thing. Um, it's a very simple interface, and we can take a look at that too in a minute. Um, but you know, it's not terribly surprising. You just look at it and see a bunch of backups, and download one if you need to. Um, and it's pretty fast to set up, and uh, and it, it once again puts the backups in your control. Um, and uh, last week, we hope we've you know made it uh, easier to even to do the right thing by making it pretty low cost. Um, the basic plans are, are nine bucks a month, um, and so that covers the needs of most um, you know single sites. Probably a lot of the kinds of sites that you guys are um, uh, are building. Uh, you know, for basically a hundred bucks a year, you get a little. Uh, well, hopefully a lot of added peace of mind and uh, never have to use it kind of service until that one horrible, horrible day when you realize, oh my goodness, this just saved me a lot. Um, uh, there are a couple of limitations with it um, that actually should just mention actually in, in conjunction with um, uh, with with backup and migrate as well. Uh, that being uh, mostly, this, this is exposed with, with node scroll, but PHP timeouts and uh, file sizes. So. If you have a single file that is larger than five gigabytes, so if you have a huge database, um, databases tend to com compress quite well, um, maybe eight, 10, 12 to one sort of thing. But if you had like a hundred gigabyte database, uh, even compressed, uh, cache tables removed, et cetera, you might start pushing up against the, uh, a hard limit of five, five gigabytes per upload. Um, and uh, you also might start running into uh, PHP timeouts. So it uses PHP to create the archive, to create the backup, and so that, that can be something to be aware of. Um, and the place where, in, in the real world where this comes into you know, more practical you know, happening is in uh, say a lot of, like a, a large video archive or something like that, where you're, where you're having to upload a number of very large video files and it's taking a long time. Um, the transfers all happen directly from your server to uh, the node scroll backend, which happens to be um, uh, an Amazon S3 bucket. Um, and there's just some kind of interesting architecture stuff that uh, we didn't include in the slide, but I'd be happy to answer questions about like the way that works and such. I, being sort of techno geeky, it's it's fun to talk about. But um, uh, so they tend to be very, you know, they're, they're using very high bandwidth connections. So it's using, uh, you know, typically those backups move quite quickly. But um, it's, but they're it's something limited, to be aware yeah, of. They're yeah. limited to five gig in size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but also like they can time out because of right. uh, like how long it takes to push right. that much information. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, I, that's great. It's really cool stuff to hear, especially for our science community who happens to manage, a, you know, a bunch of data through Drupal. Um, so that's, that's, these are like really key um, points to highlight. Um, so I have one other question, but Bruce answer, asked a question here in the chat. And so he says, uh, does Node Squirrel have any government agency clients or, or any issues with security for federal agencies? Oh, interesting. Um, we have a number of, so we as a firm uh, work with a variety of governmental and nonprofit uh, clients and I think a lot of other people who who you know are in this space. I mean that's pretty common. Um, uh, so certainly you know I know that we have clients using Node Squirrel. We don't have any federal clients. Uh, we have several different state governments. Um, I know that we have you know some universities at different places that are public universities. Again, there's no such thing as a federal university. I don't know that we have any federal. Um, site. That's interesting. Um, in terms of federal security, uh, you know, obviously we're using Drupal, so you know, like that. That's an established security entity. Um, the, you know, like there are uh, there's so security things that we are familiar with, or that I would be able to answer more quickly is something like PCI compliance, um, and. Uh, uh, that we are not PCI compliant, primarily by virtue of uh, not having really gone after it. Uh, everything we're using should uh, 
be theoretically PCI compliant or uh, also HIPAA compliant is another one uh, that just involves a lot of um, regulation and oversight that, that we honestly really haven't looked into uh, for HIPAA compliance in particular. But um, we are using, I mean, it's again, it's everything is everything is happening encrypted, it's encrypted at rest and it's using Amazon's S3 storage. And there are ways to um, do, you know, have a PCI compliant cloud storage. But uh, again, what you're talking about, I don't think is PCI compliance. Um, so I honestly don't know what, what yeah. um, standards you might need to comply to. So that's a really long way of saying, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, that's totally cool. It's, it's just great to, to get where you guys are at on that issue and um, yeah. so that we can address those questions when they come up. Um, yeah, no, I'm curious, actually, by telling us more, like, is there, is, you know, what's the three-letter acronym that, that people will ask about that you are, that, that you in turn need to know the answers to? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, for Woods Hole Ethnographic Institution, they're certainly concerned about security, but not in the way that, you know, a federal agency, I think, would be concerned. So I can't speak for them directly. I don't know if Bruce has any input or, or insight there. Um, yeah, not, not really, not really. I think uh, I was just, it's always easier to talk to uh, uh, one agency if you're already doing business with another agency. That's all. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, no, we absolutely see that. We see that within state government. Like, we work with, um, yeah, with very state government. The same same kind of thing happens. Yeah, no, I, I wish I had, well, maybe you guys could start using it, and then uh, then, then you could be that agency. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Drew, I had a quick question about the limitations. So have you guys had any clients come up against those limitations? Um, and what have been the solutions for those situations? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, we do have some pretty big sites um, using uh, back of a migrate node squirrel. I'm not positive that we have uh, actually got one. What we would do in that situation is, you know, like if you're up against byte limit, for example, and that's what you 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 know, like what you need to back up. Then really, I mean, that's just an honest. Um, that's again probably something like a large number of files, uh, or you know, or, or a small number of very large files. Um, in which case, you you might have another backup system in place. Um, the the likelihood of running up against a database backup with this limitation, uh, especially when it's something like you know just large data sets. I mean that that's a it's an extraordinary. Well, I should maybe you guys have a different. In my experience, that's a very large data set, um, and certainly my experience colors what I think is large. I guess, but but you know like a hundred gigs of uh, uncompressed non-cache other things like that. I, I think that's large. I don't know, but maybe. <laughs> You not being is that normal or is that big for you? Uh, no, no, no. I would say that I would say, you know ninety nine percent of the sites that I know about would be more than yeah uh, under that limit. You know, we just get the the super nerdy guys or, or folk that you know love to ask those edge questions. So um, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some address, right? Yeah, I, I I mean I think as we've talked with with other people, mm -hmm. um, they they found that back to migrate and you know node scroll can be a really good fit for making sure that there are good usable backups of the database. Yeah. And you know when you've got the database, you've got eighty percent of your site covered yeah. in terms of what what would be super difficult right, to right. try and recreate, recover that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when the public files are just just too big, there's just much of that. Yeah. Then they use like rsync. Yeah, something like yeah. There's a, a, other options that that uh, can handle that kind of thing, or you know, you know, FTP backups and such. Okay, sure. Uh, also, you know, like all all kinds of other things. The, kind of the 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 hopeful point of both backup and migrate and node scroll is that you don't have to set up something custom for every single different site, and this is this way, and the other one's that way, and um, well, even if, you, even if you're just managing one, um, the you know. Doing something that is secure, that is encrypted, um, that you can just set up and be done with, uh, and that you know is working, and is going to send you an email if it doesn't. You know, like all of those things, um, uh, you know, add I think some niceties that you know. For example, maybe you can set up an R sync. You, you could do you know do some shell scripting to have MySQL dump do things, uh, and then and then transfer your files somewhere, um, and. Uh, well, it's certainly doable. Um, in practice, you know, it's just a little, it's just a bit more to maintain, um, and 
uh, hopefully what this does, again, is kind of makes it easy to do a good job. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the goal. Yeah. Trying to make it, yeah, exactly. Trying to do the right thing. Make it a little bit, a little bit, a bit easier to handle. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, this is great. And I think the big takeaway is, you know, nine bucks a month. That's, that's fantastic. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, it shouldn't, I mean, yeah. yeah. We're, we're hoping I'm to make it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Bruce is raising his hand. I just wanted to make sure you got a chance to chime in. I have my hand up. There it is. <laughs> it's, it's a little handy thing. Um, no, I just had a question about uh, your sort of business model, um, and it, it could be that, uh, let's say, uh, NASA, which runs its own cloud, uh, really wants to have a license to use the Node Squirrel software stack to uh, to do backups to its own cloud. Um, is that something that might be in the future? Yeah, we've very much talked about that. Um, and we don't have anyone doing that now. Um, I think, um, <laughs> um, here, let's go. <laughs> I'll let you go back for that. Um, the, uh, <laughs> pardon the, uh, pardon, pardon the schedule pop up there. Um, the we, we don't have anyone doing that now. I think you know some large universities also are people who have had have raised that question with us. Um, really open to it, um, but uh, haven't you know? It's not something we've done in any sort of a, a aggressive way or really been seeking out. Um, so it'd be interesting uh, to I mean, have I think, further I mean, conversation like, about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I sort of hear that and think, wow, that sounds pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's about as far as the you know. <laughs> unless we keep talking, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I could see a number of, of I know a number of agencies are using Drupal now, and that that list is expanding. And uh, um, if if you wanted to, you know, get some part of your team that starts to look at uh, federal government stuff, and you you know, you get a GSA number or something like that, um, uh, they can you know write a contract with you. That's that's going to work out, you know, to everyone's advantage, and it's just a thought. Yeah, um, that's that's actually really interesting. Um, we haven't really identified. Um, well, I mean, to, to be quite. Uh, I mean, it, it, so this is a, you know we're sort of servicing the open source community, and we haven't, uh, I would say, aggressively marketed ourselves in any way um, to to make it you know to do something like GSA, like you know, which is which is something we actually have looked at in the other part of our business, which is Gordon Studios, which works with lots of cool clients and such, and again, a, a fair number of, of governmental folks, um, but um, I, I actually haven't even it, it never even occurred to me to to uh, do something like that for Node Squirrel. Mm -hmm. um, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. cool, thank you. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Sure, no, this is really valuable. Awesome. I mean, this, this just hits a sweet spot on the, you know, how to, how to keep things uh, up when, uh, when someone stupid does something, you know, on your <laughs> site. This is, this, is, this is the big problem with universities. Um, as yeah. they uh, start having 50 or 80 Drupal sites, um, and they're bringing in, you know, grad students to add modules or do this or that, and they open up uh, some kind of security leak, and the site gets wonky. Um, what do they do? Right? They so they're not really prepared to do this kind of backup because they're, you know, the anthropology department. They don't know, you know. You know, right. Why should they do that? Yeah, because it's a university too, and nothing ever goes wrong in a university. So, um. <laughs> well, I, I I should mention that um, that you you actually can if you install backup and migrate, and you want to give Node Squirrel a try, you can do that for free. Um, you can um, store up to twenty backups mm -hmm. on uh, on Node Squirrel. So set your schedule and and to whatever kind of interval uh, you'd like backups to run, and and take. Yeah, make sure try it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure it's uh, no. the easy thing. Yeah. The, the, the other thing, like, as we were creating it, we were, one of the things we were trying to do is uh, make something that we would be willing to use. So the idea of um, that none of us, particularly, like, for whatever reason, we don't like the idea of have to put in your credit card in order to 
to try, you know, just feel a little bit like, oh, I don't, you know. So there's no credit card required. Just go ahead, try it. Um, and uh, if it works, please uh, sign up. Yeah. That's very cool. So to try it for free, do you just go to the Node Squirrel tab on Back and Migrate and set it up there? Or yep. Where do we yeah. Go? <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah, you need to click the link, click right. the link, click the link right. paste it, yep. off, done. Install the module, you'll see yeah. the Node Scroll tab. It will walk you through the instructions of uh, going out to the Node Scroll site, creating your user account, getting your secret key, and off you go. Yeah, it's probably Great. two or three steps there, yeah. but it's pretty quick. And there are instructions on the Scroll website as well, yeah. all of that. Yeah. Cool. So. All right. If, any any last questions? Further questions? No. No. Let me say I think this is going to be very popular on the uh, YouTube channel. I think people will be uh, uh, checking it out, even though they didn't make it today. Excellent. Well, um, you know, if you hear people who have questions, we're always always yeah. happy to chat, folks. So. Yeah. If anybody has, you can um, be funneling through uh, Adam or and then to us or or just directly to us, whatever. Yeah. We're happy to we're happy to chat. <laughs> we like chatting. Yeah. yeah. Do you have Do you have a slide with your contact info? Yeah, that's, a <laughs> that's a really good idea. Here we <laughs> Wait, do we yeah. have it? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm giving our studios addresses too, but uh, well, these what, they're they're, they're, yeah. They're, yeah. those work quite well. Excellent. Great. Thank you guys so much. This was such a cool presentation and uh, your energy is fantastic. I can't wait to tell my boss about uh, this opportunity. So I I'm sure other folk uh, around ESIP, uh, the Drupal Working Group, will be excited about this too. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Oh, you're most yeah. welcome. Thank you so much. All right, thanks. Bye. Bye. Have a great day. All right, you too. Bye now.